It's 1974 at Brands Hatch. The Formula One circus has arrived for the British Grand Prix with a grid stacked full of legends and shaved beers. Most of the drivers that turned up that weekend were on that grid on race day, although some of them didn't quite make it that far. Included in that list of drivers who failed to qualify was Lella Lombardi. It was a bit of a kick in the teeth to not qualify for her first attempt at a Grand Prix, but that didn't deter her from trying again. And after all, everything before this date suggested that she knew what she was doing. She was the Formula Ford Mexico champion, which which was held in the UK, the Formula 850 Italy champion and vice champion in the Italian F3 series. During the course of 1974, she took part in the European F5000 championship, teaming up with Ian Ashley at Shell Sport Luxembourg. Her consistent array of results meant that she nabbed P5 in the championship, all the while improving her pace throughout the year, edging closer and closer to the times of Ashley who was very fast, but had an unhealthy obsession with cartwheeling into the trees, having rented out a Brabham Formula 1 car from Mr Bernie Eccleston. Lombardi set off for the Brands Hatch circuit to attempt to qualify for that year's British Grand Prix, although that same chassis had failed to qualify for the French Grand Prix at the hands of Carlos Pache. By Friday morning, she was under a second away from John Watson in the sister car before the drive shaft decided not to drive shaft anymore. Despite improving immensely over the course of two days, which was the only time she had in the car anyway, she failed to qualify for the race. Having said that, she did out-qualify some established drivers in that field, so it wasn't a complete disaster. Later that year, she took part in the Australian Grand Prix at Oran Park, where she qualified fourth and was on track for a podium before the oil pump lost the will to live. She became the first woman to qualify for the race of champions at Brands Hatch in 1974. She qualified again in 1975, where she outqualified the likes of Jochen Maas, Ian Ashley, and Emerson Fittipaldi. And someone who noticed these efforts was Count Zanon, a man who was instrumental in the career of Ronnie Peterson. Zanon chipped in 50 grand to help Lombardi secure a drive with March for the 1975 Formula One season. Showing up three rounds late, Lombardi successfully qualified for the South African Grand Prix, thereby becoming the first woman since Maria Teresa De Filippis to race in a Formula 1 Grand Prix. But fuel issues 23 laps into the Grand Prix meant that she would not finish the race. Heading into the next round in Spain, things weren't initially looking brilliant, perhaps too preoccupied with throwing goats off church towers. The Anko barriers that were lining the Montreux circuit were not put together properly. This enraged the drivers and thus went on strike. It was only after they threatened to seize the cars that the drivers eventually caved in. For Lombardi, however, there were more issues at play. While teammate Vittorio Brambler qualified in P5, Lombardi barely made the grid. But when the green flag dropped on Sunday, the cars were starting to drop like flies. In the first seven laps alone, nine cars were out of the race. And on lap 25, a major crash caused by Rolf Stommelin's collapsing rear wing saw four trackside spectators killed. The race went on for a few more laps before eventually being red flagged. Only half points were gifted as the race didn't run 75% of the distance, but because points were only gifted to the top six finishers back then, and because Lombardi finished in P6, she thereby became the first woman in the history of Formula 1 to score a point, even if it was only half of one. But that's not the point. That joke was dry, wasn't it? For the remainder of that year, she struggled to find results. She pointed out to the team that the car was handling like rabies and was severely affecting her performances, but the team didn't really buy into this. And so just one round into the 1976 season, they replaced her with Ronnie Peterson, one of the fastest drivers of that generation. Once he got into the car, he relayed the same complaints that Lombardi did. And once they gave the Super Suite a new chassis, they examined the monocoque and found that the rear bulkhead had cracked, which is what Lombardi had claimed had happened to the chassis. So why didn't they listen to her? Well, this was motor racing in the 1970s. Why do you think they didn't listen? She raced only for a couple more Grand Prix, driving for the Ram team, which didn't really yield any results. But really, qualifying in a Ram is winning in and of itself. After the Austrian Grand Prix, her Formula 1 career was over. In her remaining years of racing, she did everything from Le Mans to DTM to NASCAR before finally retiring in 1987. Sure, looking at the results on paper is a little grim. It doesn't paint the picture of a groundbreaking trailblazer pioneer and such. And the cynics would point out that the red flagged race that she got her points in was a little bit of a damp squib. And maybe the likes of Desiree Wilson, Pat Moss and Michelle Mouton would have done better had they been given the chance. But irrespective, Lombardi has set the benchmark for all female drivers to follow. She is an icon for female and LGBT drivers. Even if her gender meant nothing to her in the grand scheme of things, in her mind, she was a racing driver, first and foremost. But while she was the first woman to score points in Formula 1, the only question that remains is who will be next. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you're awesome, and always remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus, and as always, I'll see you all later.